very much. I want to start with the following example, which is well known and due to Virgin's Finot and Dyer. Let's consider the intersection of the two quadrix given by these two forms. We are interested in a question such a system allows a rational, a non trivial rational solution. The first thing you check is if such a thing is soluble over QP for all primes P and over the reals. You can do this very easily for that example, and you will find that this is soluble over QP for all primes P and over R. Let's call the surface S. But still, S has no rational point. <coughs> this can be explained by some Brown-Manin obstruction. There's also an elementary argument which I want to show you. Assume x is a rational point in S. We can normalize the coordinates in a way such that, say, x0 and x1 are both integers co-prime. Then I claim that 5 can divide neither x0 nor x1. You see this by considering the system of equations. If 5 would divide the left-hand side, would divide x2 and then x1 by the second equation. So you can't divide either of these, and in a similar way, it can't divide, for example, x0 plus x1 and the other thing. Now let's consider a prime which is congruent to plus minus 2 modulo 5. Such a prime is inert in the extension q at giant square root 5, and hence it has to divide both x0 and x1, which are co-prime to an even power. So all such primes divide x0 and x1 to an even power. It's the same phenomenon as if you want to write an integer sum of two squares and primes congruent three root four have to divide to an even power. Okay, so we conclude from this that both x0 and x1, they have to be congruent to plus or minus one modulo five. But the same argument applies to the other two linear forms in the second equation. So the very, very same argument shows you that also x0 plus x1 has to be congruent plus or minus one modulo five. Well, that's a contradiction. These things can't happen simultaneously. An alternative way to explain this is you can look at the question. Sorry? I can, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Another way to explain this is you look at a quaternion algebra, at least for a point where, say, this is defined, a quotient of the two linear factors that we just played with. If you have a rational point, then by the Hasse reciprocity law, the product of all the local Hilbert symbols is equal to 1. You can also fix one new one place and evaluate the Hilbert symbol all on the Q nu points of S. You will find that you always get a constant evaluation of all of the local Q nu points. That for nu not equal to 5, you get 1, and for nu equal to 5, you get minus 1. So, right, it can't work because a rational point has a property that the product goes to 1. More generally, you can interpret this as an element of the Bravo group, and this is a Brown-Manin obstruction. So the general picture would be you take a maybe smooth Bravo variety X over some number field K. Then you can define a pairing of the Bravo group and the idyllic points of X mapping to Q modulo Z. More precisely, if you have one K new point of X and element of Bravo group by pulling back and taking a local invariant map, you get a map to Q mod Z and summing over all the places, this uh, gives you the pairing. But it has a prosecutor law, as we've seen in this example, if you take here a rational point, then it will map to zero under all elements of the Brouwer group. So it's convenient to define what is called Brouwer-Manin set. That's a set of all adelic points which have the property that they are orthogonal to the whole Brouwer group. We've just seen that are rational points, they're contained in a Brouwer set, and of course this is contained in the adelic points, which in the case of projective variety, is nothing else than a product these places. <coughs> the statement that if this is non-empty implies that you have a rational point is known as the local global principle or the hazard principle. It can happen that you have local points everywhere in this example, but that the problem money set is empty. Then we have to say that we have a problem money obstruction to the hazard principle. So in some sense, problem money obstruction or pro groups can be used to find classes of varieties which violate the hazard principle. It's non-trivial to find such examples with a collaborator of mine 
your kernel. We showed that for the case of the Petsy service of degree four, so the intersection of two vortex in P4, these examples are everywhere. More precisely, the set of the Petsy services of degree four that violate the Hasser principle Yeah, it's a risky dense the modular scheme. If you want, you can also interpret this as a statement of saying that violating the Hasser principle is not a geometric property, but really an ar arithmetic property. Previously, we only had a one parameter family which was conditional to Shinz's hypothesis. We build a two parameter family which in fact covers the whole modular space, which is unconditional. Yes, they need one specific quadratic polynomial. Yes, thanks. In another direction, you might ask, when does the Brouwer group control the whole picture? We know that the closure of the rational points, so the, the, sorry, the closure of this point, the product topology or adult topology is closed, is contained in a Brouwer manifold. So you could ask, when does the Brouwer group cut out exactly everything? There's a conjecture of Coliotelin, which says that if you have a smooth proper geometrically irreducible variety, which is rationally connected, so every two points, general points can be connected to rational curves, then a problem and obstruction has exactly that property. It controls the Hasse principle and big approximation. We would like to understand for what classes of varieties is this the case, for what classes can we prove it. One very useful method is what is called vibration method. The basic idea is that if you have, say, a space X and a vibration, for example, to projective line, if you can verify that the set of rational points is then in the power set holds for the planes and for essentially almost all fibers, then you want to show that this property holds for the whole space X. So you only want to prove that the Brownian obstruction is the only two weak approximation and has the principle for the fibers and for the base, then you are contracted for the whole space. Very recently, Harpers and Wittenberg have made some important progress in that direction. They show that if for a nice class of varieties X, if you assume some additional conjectures that they come up with on split values of polynomials, then this process works. Together with Tim Browning. Sorry, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it is about split values of polynomials. Yes, yeah. yeah, so previous. Yes, but weaker. So previously, people have often used Shinzo's hypothesis. And they have weakened it to some conjecture which you could describe as split values of polynomials, but it's a bit elaborate to really state it formally. In recent work of mine with Tim Browning, we have been able to verify part of their conjectures. And the result is the following theorem. And we build on this work of Harpers and Wittenberg. Say that X is a nice variety, smooth proper geometrically integral, and that F is a nice vibration to P1, which is dominant and has a property that a geometric generic fiber is rationally connected. Also assume that you don't have too many bad fibers Formally we stated, and the formula we say the rank of F is at most three. The rank is the sum of the decrease of the closed points of P1 about which you have a non-split fiber. It's essentially the number of bad fibers. So if this is at most three, and if one of the bad fibers that's now a minor technical condition is over a rational point, then this idea works, which means that if for all, almost all fibers Xc, the rational points are dense in a Brownian set with almost all C. I mean, for example, almost all C, which lie in some open, Starisky open subset. Then the Brownian obstruction controls both weak approximation and has a principle 
on the whole space or the rational points of X, they are dense in the Brownian set of X. The whole theorem works only for the number of field k equals q. That's due to the fact that we lose, use a lot of analytic number theory to prove this. Among other things, we need to find densities of square free values of norm forms. We use mainly SIF methods, file in a sum estimate. If you want, you can also say we use some approximations to some arithmetic functions, which is maybe inspired by the circle method. Oh, um, not for this variety, but for some auxiliary varieties. So in fact, the conjectures of Harpas and Wittenberg, they can be phrased as um, stating that for some auxiliary varieties involving norm forms, strong approximation holds for some open subset. Previously, it has only been known for the rank being at most two by Harpas and Wittenberg, which builds on work of Kolyutin and Skorobogata for of the rank at most two, and rank one is due to Harari. If you allow all the bad fibers to lie about rational points, then there's very strong work of analytic, uh, of additive combinatorics. You can plug in work of Neely and Mathiesen and just use it for any rank. I just want to give you an example where such a thing can be applied. For example, if you do with a variety, P is an irreducible quadratic polynomial. P of T equals a norm form over any number field. So that's some homogeneous form in n variables if n is a degree of the number field of degree n. Then one can show that the Brownian obstruction is the only obstruction to any smooth problem models of this variety. We had known this result previously, but now this is a special case of this much more general theorem. I think that's all what I wanted to say for today. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much.